I'm going to be taking you through how I do post-production in Photoshop. Um, and so what I'm going to do quickly is show you how I rendered it out. So I did 1920 by 1080 and that's done in the output settings. In the, ready, uh, in the render settings, I made sure to render without the denoiser and I just used medium high contrast down here with sRGB. So um, basically what you do is you go to um, view layer and I'm going to enable denoising data and then once that's rendered out, I'm basically going to, um, uh, I'm going to use this render layers. So you basically uh, click use nodes and I'm going to bring this across. You can see in render layers, we've got denoising, normal, albedo and depth. And so what I do is I create a filter denoise node. The image is going to go into the image. The normal is going to go into the normal. And the albedo is going to go into albedo. And then the image of the denoise node is going to go into the composite. So what was a noisy render should now, once the compositor works, be a non-noisy image. So you can see that works pretty well. The only other thing I've done, which you can see, and this is quite noisy, and um, if I was going to do a proper Instagram export, I'd probably do a few more samples, but just for the sake of showing you my, um, you know, my post-processing workflow, this is enough. Um, so, so the only other thing I've done to this image is I've used something called... Um, so the only other thing that I've done for this render is I've used something called ProLens and it's a plugin, I think it's for free or it might be a little bit of money but basically it just creates a nice depth of field effect um, and you can select like a 1.8 aperture and then um, you just add ProLens and it looks really good. So that's just kind of a pretty pretty minor thing. So once you've done the um, done the render and applied the um, the denoise node in the compositor, you're gonna save as. And I'm just gonna save it as a TIFF, a 16-bit TIFF. Let's just call it Waterhouse One. Save as image. And so we're gonna, we are going to go into Photoshop now. And so I'm just going to drag in Waterhouse 1 into my Photoshop um, overall view. And you can see that's what it's looking like just straight out of the bat. What I'm going to do is filter, convert for smart filters, go OK. And then I'm just going to go into camera raw filter. Perfect. That's great. So, um, the first thing I'm going to do, you can just like click and drag and zoom in and zoom out. The first thing I'm going to do is turn my monitor into black and, black and white mode. So you go control window C and if you don't get that, you can enable color filters in windows. Um, and so basically now that we're in black and white mode, I can kind of alter the values of the image a lot easier. And the values are the very first thing that I kind of tackle. So I'm also looking up in the top right in the histogram. We want this roundy bit to be nice and kind of um, balanced in the middle of the image. And you can see it's quite, quite in the bottom. So if we just boost this up a little bit, that's okay. So I'm just going to increase the whites a little bit. Um, reduce the highlights. So this this little section here is really um, the only place that I'm um, kind of changing for the values. Let's just boost the shadows. I think that's pretty good. It, it is kind of a little bit on the lower side, but I do want this to be a little bit more of a darker and gloomier image. So let's see how that looks when I turn off the color filter. That looks pretty decent. So if I turn before and after, oh, what happened? Um, let's see. Yeah. So before and after, it's a pretty big change. And you can see 
it is kind of a bit brighter, but you do lose some of that nice moodiness. So what I'm going to do now that we're back in the color mode is just kind of like tweak it a little bit. I think the shadows we pulled up too much. Let's just lower that back down a little bit. Let's lower the highlights down ever so slightly. Sometimes the histogram kind of, you know, if you get it really balanced, it doesn't actually look very good. But it's a good starting point. So I think in terms of lighting, that's pretty good so far. I really do want the inside to be a little bit darker. So that's perfect. The next step is I increase the vibrance and I reduce the saturation. And it just, some, it just does something really nice to the colors. Um, it makes the colors really rich but not too saturated. But you need to kind of do an equal amount. So that's plus 8 in vibrance and minus 9 in saturation. The next step is sharpening. I really boost that up. Do not be afraid of sharpening. Um, and for the color mixer saturation i'm just going to play around with these colors a little bit uh, i think the orange there's actually not oh, there's a fair amount of orange i think where it's at is actually quite good it's a little bit more desaturated the red there's actually not a lot of red in here so in the color mixer you can really just play around with um yeah these colors i actually don't mind a bit of yellow it kind of warms it a little bit the green is actually okay as well because there's not a whole bunch of green in here. I'll just bring that saturation down a little bit. And the blue, the only blue you can see is kind of in the concrete texture, so that's fine. We can kind of keep that down. I like to lower the purple and the magenta colors because they're just not very realistic for a natural light scene. And the next step is the luminance. Um, you want to be pretty careful about that. It does impact the overall brightness and darkness of the color but you can go overboard pretty quickly but I think in general it's actually all right I might boost the oranges up a little bit just to kind of give a little bit more brightness to the to the sunlight the last thing I do is the hue so um, this is where you can change the hue of the color um, I think in general it's okay the greens we can kind of make it a little bit more a little bit warmer but not too warm aqua's okay i quite like where the blue's at so i think in terms of overall colors and brightness darkness that's actually all right the next thing i do is geometry so i'm going to just go auto and that will just do a very slight tweak the last thing i do generally is grain i do like to add grain back in and post-processing and I'm just going to introduce a little bit of vignette, but not too much because it is already a little bit of vignetting. Um, finally, I'll just do selective kind of adjustments. I really don't like how there's light here. Um, and I could just go back into the scene and do and try to figure out what's causing that light. But I'm just going to create a brush with the selective adjustments. And I'm just going to brush over here. Let's show overlay. Let's turn that off. And then I'm just going to play around with the exposure a little bit. Let's drop that down. Let's reduce the saturation. So it just kind of like fades out a little bit. Let's reduce the blacks ever so slightly. Reduce the whites. I think that exposure is a little bit too hardcore. So let's bring that back a little bit. See, that doesn't catch the catch the eye anymore. If I turn that on and off, you can see that's a pretty big difference. So do not be afraid of doing selective adjustments. Let's go OK. And you can see before and after, it's actually pretty minimal because in the Blender scene, it was actually looking pretty good. So we really just gave it a little bit more um, coordination with the colors and the, and the kind of um, the values are also just a little bit more strong and pronounced and the really big factor is just the sharpness you know adding that sharpness modifier really really helps to make the image really crispy so i really hope you have found this course useful make sure to stay tuned for the next courses i do because um, i love doing these projects and just showing you how i do my full process um, and just breaking it right down so it's easy to understand um, make sure to check out my instagram there's a link in the description 
you can keep up to date with the kind of work I do as a professional and also make sure to check out my Discord. There's a link in the description. You can share your renders with me and get feedback from me and the community and it's a great place to level up as a 3D artist. So I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.